Hi there, and welcome to this episode of Beyond the Photo with me, Damien Jackson. In this video, I'm at Brayhead on Valencia Island in County Kerry. I'm going to take some photographs of the old signal or watchtower and also take a brief look at the history and background to it. So you're very welcome and thank you for joining me along the journey and let's get going. You join me on the 13th of May on my first trip post-county lockdown and it's to my favourite photography playground, the Kingdom of Kerry. It's been months now since we've been able to travel and I feel like a child being released from school getting out into the big bad world for the summer holidays. So my first stop is going to be Brayhead on Valencia Island. I've been to Valencia Island many times but I never took the hike up to Brayhead and the old signal tower. I believe there's a fantastic view out to the Skellig Islands from the head and I'm really looking forward to my trip. Valencia Island is situated on the southwest coast of Ireland and is connected to the mainland by bridge at Port McGee and ferry at Reynard Point. The English name Valencia appears to indicate a Spanish origin from the city of that name but it's more likely to be a mispronunciation by English and Spanish sailors of the old Irish name of a settlement on the island called Onbailinche, which means the island passage or mouth of the sound. Now I had to look up what a sound meant in relation to the sea, and apparently it's a narrow passage of water between the mainland and an island. So once again, the old Irish place names demonstrate that they hold a definitive meaning rather than the contrived English phonetic translations that were forced upon settlements and townsland and have no meaning at all. Brayhead is located on the western end of Valencia Island and is one of the signature points on the Wild Atlantic Way. There's a car park at the start of the 7 km loop trail and it's easily accessible by anyone with a moderate level of fitness. The views on the way up the trail are stunning. On your left is the Port McGee Channel, also known as Ongooling Darvra, and you can look out over Port McGee looking all the way back towards Cahar Savine. Ahead of you, about 12 kilometres out to sea, are Skellig Michael, the larger island, and Little Skelligs. The Signal Stroke Watchtower is a two-storey building and is said to have been constructed in 1815 during the Napoleonic Wars. This followed the aborted French invasion of 1796. This potential invasion drove a shot of fear into the then British rulers and they quickly set about building a series of signal towers along the coast so that signals could be passed from one to the other in the event of another French attack. More recently, the tower at Brayhead was used as a Navy signal station in 1907 and again during World War II, or the emergency as we called it here in Ireland. It was during this time that the coast watchers set out stones spelling the word ERA about 100 metres below the tower to let passing pilots know that they were over neutral Ireland. Some of these stones still remain today. Now the tower at Brayhead is not exactly a beautiful piece of architecture or anything like it to photograph, but what I think it does do is provide an anchor point for the beautiful scenery around the area. So when you get there, the composition is up on the hill that looks over the watchtower and also takes in the sea and the surrounding area. Okay, for my first composition, I've come up to a cliff that's overlooking the actual um, signal tower itself. And as you can see, you can see the Skellig um, 
islands in the background there. And what I'm just waiting for now is hopefully I'll get some light on the signal tower itself. There's a cross lighting. So the light is coming from my right across and I'm just waiting for a gap in the clouds. I can see over to my left there's some lovely light on the cliffs. But I just need it here, so I'm just hanging on for that. I'm shooting at um, a sixth of a second F18, so all I have on is um, a 0.6 graduated filter because at the moment this cliff face is very shadowy and the sky is bright. So I'm just waiting and hoping to get a bit of light onto the signal tower before I take this shot. So if you can see it now, the light has just come onto the signal tower, so I'm just um, clipping away here. I'll just zoom in a little bit, change it up a little bit. So here it is, the first shot of the evening. I'm not really sure about this one. I'm probably a little bit early and the light is harsh and not sure if the composition works. But look, it's a start. Okay, I'm going to try and change it up this time and put on a six stop um, ND filter and see if I can get some movement in the clouds. There's plenty of wind around as you can probably hear and um, flatten out the sea a little bit just to change it up rather than keep taking these shots now. So even with the six stop at um, F16, I'm still only getting three seconds. So I'm going to put on uh, another one with it and try and get a little bit longer. Let's see. Okay, so by adding the extra filter, I'm after getting a 30 second exposure at F16. And that really has smoothed out the water. There's still not much movement in the, in the clouds. I think they're just too far away. Um, but look, I'll take one more of those and I'll move on then from here. Although this shot is pretty much the same composition as the previous one that I said I didn't like, I much prefer this one. Um, it's a little later in the evening and there's more color there. In addition to that, I do like a little bit of movement in the clouds. And I must say, I do like a flat sea, um, a long exposure effect, rather than the record shot of just you know, taking it in a, um, a shorter exposure. So again, not a banger, but we're starting to move up the ranking a little bit. At this stage, I've come up a little bit higher again. Um, I've just spotted some rocks here, just in front of me, and I want to use these as a piece of foreground. They're kind of really sharp, um, they're like slate bladed rocks, and um, hopefully they'll guide the eye into the signal tower. Now it's gone really windy now, so I don't know if a long exposure will work. But I'll take a few normal shots at F16, a sixth of a second, and then I'll try the long exposure and see how it goes. Nothing to lose, only a blurry shot. Here's the first shot at one tenth of a second. As you can see, it's a wide angle lens and it's wide open almost at 12 mil, which makes those rocks in the foreground appear very large. But you can see now how small and insignificant the signal tower and the Skellig Islands in the background have become. Okay, so here we go. Uh, 10 stop filter, 30 seconds, F16, ISO 100, two stop or two second timer. And let's give it a go. Oh, I think I can see the camera shake already with the wind. Of course, the big filter holder on the front doesn't help either. It catches a lot of wind. Shall we see how it goes? So despite the wind, I got a couple of long exposures from that location. Here are two, a landscape one and a vertical one. I'm quite pleased with these. Um, I think they worked out well. It's beautiful colors. When I zoomed into the image, I could see that there was slight blurring, um, particularly on the rock in the foreground. But I put both of them into Topaz Sharpen AI. And to be honest, I'm happy with them. It does a great job. On this one, I used the setting of motion blur. 
and that really helped to cure the softness within the image. Okay, that's me done. I'm definitely out of the here this time. Now, just as I come out from there, I'm just looking behind me, and they always say, look behind you. So, if I look behind, I'm just looking at the beautiful light over the mountains there as I'm looking back towards Port McGee and Cahir Savine. Absolutely fabulous light there. It's always behind you when you need it in front of you. Not to worry. So quick as I could before the light was gone, I put down my tripod, turned the camera into vertical and took this quick six shot panel. Not the greatest panel ever, but it's not too bad. I think it also shows that no matter how much planning you put into the position of your compositions and all of that, that opportunities always present themselves and you just need to be ready to capture them. I mean, this one was pure luck. If I hadn't turned away from the cliff face, I wouldn't have even seen this. Following that, I decided to start making my way down the cliff and get ready for the short hike back to the car park. The last remaining light suddenly lit up a couple of clouds that were sitting over the Skelligs. The wide angle lens was too short to show the beautiful scene that was unfolding, so I quickly grabbed the 70 to 200. This is the end result. So that's it from me at Brayhead. As you can see, the sun has gone down like a ball of fire behind me. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please leave a like or a comment below. That helps YouTube spread around the video for me, and it would be much appreciated. So until next time, stay safe, and bye for now.